Hello everyone, welcome to this presentation. This time we are going to see how to drive FEM from Python. Particularly, we are going to use a Python module called PyFEM. So in this video, we are going to see an introduction, then how to install this module, PyFEM, where to find information about the different commands, and finally, we will see two examples. Example one, in which we are going to see how to implement the analysis of an 8-core inductor that we have done previously. And then we will see another example in which we will show how to implement the analysis of an EE-core inductor with an 87 material. In our previous video, FEM number 3, Analysis of an Inductor with Nonlinear Material, we have seen how to use Lua scripts in order to analyze the behavior of an EE core based inductor using nonlinear material. So we have shown how with these statements here we can do the analysis quickly with different values of the current through the winding and then we can plot the value of the inductance as a function of the current. The module PyFEM takes advantage of this Lua scripting language that is included with the FEM distribution in order to drive the FEM program directly from Python. We can get information about PyFEM module from this link here. Here we have general information about the module. We have a link here to download the FEM program. Then we can download the PyFEM package if we like from this link here. And finally, most importantly, we have here a link for the manual with all the information about PyFEM. We will talk about this later. Finally, in this part here at the bottom, we have information about the changes that are being made on the module. For using this module, I am going to use WinPython. If you are not familiar with WinPython, I recommend you to take a look at this video, WinPython number one, introduction. The installation of the PyFEM module is quite straightforward. We only have to open Spider and then in the console we need only to write pip install pyfm. As I have said before, for more information about WinPython and how to install modules in WinPython, please take a look at this video here. Now let's see how to do this. We go to the console and write pip install pyfm. Enter and then we have to wait for a little while. And as we can see here, because I have installed previously PyFEM, I get this message here that the module is already existing in the system. Let's compare here a Lua script and a Python script. We can see here the Lua script that we have used before and here on the right the equivalent commands in Python. So we can see that they are very similar. The only point that we have to make is and that we have to add the word fem and a dot before and the Lua command. Otherwise the Lua commands and the Python commands they are very similar with a little differences that we can find in the documentation of Lua and Python module. In order to get information about the Lua scripting and the different commands, we can go to the help in the program and then we can open the documentation. So in chapter 3 we have the information about the Lua scripting and with the different commands that are available. We have more information, for example here, the magnetics preprocessor, Lua command set, we have these different commands here. So some of the commands start with mi. I understand that this is uh, the meaning of this is magnetic input and others are for example for the post post processor command set then we have the mo before the command so this means magnetics 
output command. So we have here the different information. And regarding the information about PyFM, as I have said before, we can go here to the manual and then we will get this information about the PyFM module. So most of the commands are exactly the same. There are some that uh, are different. So if we experience any problem with some of the commands, then we can go to this document and get the exact information. In any case, when Python is going to generate an error on the console, so in this case we can go and check the documentation to solve the issue. So let's see the first example. In this case, example number one corresponds to the analysis of an air call inductor that we have seen in a previous video. So in this case, what we are going to do is to implement the complete process of analysis using WinPython. So we are going to do the drawing and all the different steps that are required for the analysis and directly from WinPython. So here is the implementation in WinPython. We start here in line 2 by importing the module FEM. We set the value of the current 1 ampere. Then we open the program. We open a new document. We use 0 in this um, in, in this input here because it, co it corresponds to a magnetostatic problem. Then we define our problem adjusting the frequency, the units in millimeters in this case, and the type of geometry, in this case axisymmetric and the precision. Then we draw the geometry using this command here, draw line, we draw the different lines of our drawing. Then we add the block labels corresponding to the winding and the air. In these lines here we add the materials, the air and one millimeter diameter section of the copper for the coil. Then we add the coil properties, which corresponds to the coil and with the value of the current. And with this number here, 1, we say that it corresponds to a series circuit. So it's a winding. Then we associate properties to the different block labels. For the winding, we select the label, the corresponding label with the coordinates. Then we set the block properties with these values here that we can find in the documentation. Basically, the diameter, the number of the sorry, the name of the block, and then here the number of terms. We do the same with the air, and then here we create the boundary conditions using this command here: make ABC. And for the boundary conditions, we are using the default parameters, but we could create any conditions for the boundaries using other commands. Now we do a zoom in order to focus all the geometry. We save the file with this name here. And here we now do the analysis and load the solution. And now to see the results of the analysis, what we are doing here is to hide the magnetic flux lines and to show the density plots. Finally, we are going to do the inductance calculation, in this case by extracting the coil properties using this command here, get circuit properties and the name of the uh, circuit, in this case coil, so this uh, command here generates an array of three components with the current of the coil, the voltage and also the flux. So the component number two corresponds to the flux. So here what we are doing is to divide the flux by the current. So with this we get the inductance L and finally we get here the value of the inductance that we are going to show on the console. So let's see now how the program works. 
we have here the scripting as we have just explained in the previous slide. So now we can run the program and see the results. So it is finished now. So we can see here the density plot corresponding to the magnetic flux density. And we can continue working with the program if we like because we have left the program open from WinPython. If we go back to WinPython and we look at the console, we can see here the value of the inductance that we have obtained. Here is 10.5 microhenries. And this is the second example that we are going to see. In this case, we are going to use an existing file with our program already defined corresponding to this previous example that we have seen in the video FEM number 3, analysis of an inductor with non-linear material. So we have this EE core inductor with N87 material and then we are going to obtain the value of the inductance for different values of the current circulating through the winding. So let's see how to do this using WinPython. Here we are showing the script, we start importing the module and then we use this other module to define the arrays and this other module in order to do the representation of the results. Then we open the FEM program, open the existing document it is a good idea to save the document in a new file, so we are not going to uh, spoil it in case and that there is uh, some problem. So and then here what we are doing is to, uh, to create the different arrays and we are defining the range for the arrays from 0 0.5 to 3.5 in steps of 0.2 and this is the value of the current and that we are going to inject into the winding. So we have these three arrays that we required to do the analysis, the current through the winding, the energy of the inductor and the inductance. And here we are doing all the process that we have already seen in the previous video, only that in the previous video we were using Lua script instead of Python. So here at the end we are closing the program and now we do the plotting by generating a new figure and then we plot the inductance versus the current and we are using the inductance measured in millihenries. So with this we plot the labels corresponding to the x and y axis and saving our figure with this resolution. Here we can see the program in WinPython. So here is the script on the left. Remember that we need to have this file here in the same directory as our WinPython script. So this is the file containing the problem already defined using the FEM program. So now we can run the program and see the results. It's going to take a little while because we have to run the program a total of 15 times because we have uh, selected uh, so when we define the values of the current at the different points. If we look at the console, we can see the different values that we are getting. They are being printed on the console, so we can see the evolution of the solving of our problem. So now we are almost ready and now it is finished so we can see here the different values corresponding to the current and to the value of the inductance and we have also generated here a plot so we can go to plots and see the corresponding figure of the inductance in millihenries versus the current through the inductor.
which is the same as the one that we have obtained in the previous video using Lua scripting. Well, this is all today in this presentation. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know if you have any comment or question and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.